Well, good morning. It's nice to see you. It's before 6 a.m. on Wednesday. I'm tired today and my heart feels kind of tender. I don't know. So I haven't been in touch with her since she, she opened the condo. I think I'm going to, I'm gonna contact the mediator that she's already pre-contacted and I'll offer to meet with them, go in by myself and talk to them and see what I think of the situation. And then if that doesn't work out, then I'll offer my own list of mediators. The critical thing right now is time. She wants to mediate next Monday, Tuesday because she wants to be divorced by the end of the year because she knows about the tax things. The thing is, I'm on the same email list that she is. The email list is basically this. The tax law changes at the end of the year. Someone in my situation, since she earned considerably more money than I did, or earns more than I do, she will have to pay me spousal support for a little while. And if the divorce gets finalized this year, she can deduct whatever payments she has to make me, and I will be taxed on them. If the divorce doesn't go through until next year, she will have to pay taxes on the money and I won't. So I think she's trying to, she's pushing this divorce through so that she won't have to pay taxes for tax reasons because this has all become about the money. You know, for me, it's about, it's about love and heartbreak and, and, and vows and soulmates and all the beautiful things that made this marriage so special to me. And to her mind, it's this math equation of if divorce now, then less taxes. She's, she's not mourning the loss of the relationship. She's not struggling or fighting for me. She's done. She is out. And she's now working on making me the, the villain to help her put to rest whatever potential bad feelings she has for doing all this to me and doing all this to our relationship. Since she's so much watching out for her, I should be watching out for me. I wanted my wife to fight for me because I'm worth fighting for because a relationship is worth fighting for, because she knows me, and she should know that I'm good and worth fighting for. And this person yesterday was right. I'm gonna fight for me. The approval of my wife doesn't matter anymore. The happiness of my wife doesn't matter anymore. Like, none of it matters. If she keeps citing, oh, in this long text she sent me, she was citing the fact that I clearly hate her because I'm following his ex on Instagram and interacting with her, meaning I liked some photos and I said congratulations when she got a cover picture. That's what she, she's using that. That is, that's the whole thing she has against me. That's the worst thing I've done. And that, that's become this huge hot butt, like hot spot, hot butt. Like it, it's, the fact that I've done that is outrageously cruel. Cause that's all I've done. That's the worst thing she can find that I've done. I changed the locks and I did that. You know, and I even felt a little tiny little bit bad because, well, because I have a guilty conscience really. But then this morning I woke up and thought, so I did those things and she planned an affair and cheated and broke my heart and wouldn't talk to me and has lied and is deceitful and is always steps ahead. So I'm good, I'm good and I'm gonna fight for me. I'm gonna fight to make this thing not happen until the new year because that suits me. And once we're done, I will never see her again. I won't talk to her again. She'll never be nostalgic and look me up and wonder how I am. She'll be done, she'll be out. So I need to do what's best for me now. Thanks for the talk, I appreciate it, I feel better now. <laughs> I'm gonna get this dog home and, and make some coffee. Coffee sounds so good right now. Peter McKinnon did post a video yesterday of, it was a really sweet video. It was, his wife just had their second baby and he posted this six minute video just of, of the hospital and of them and of his wife and a little bit of the baby. But it's mostly of him and his wife and I'm really happy for him. And that made me kind of, that made me kind of sad for me. They look very much in love. They have a family together. They have a life together. They seem to both love each other. I want that. Someone who loves me, God, that would be so good. <laughs> I can't force that fit. I can't make it happen. But do you keep your eyes out for it? Or do you just focus on something else and maybe it'll find you? I don't know. Thanks again for the talk. I'll see you later. I just found out something else she took. She took her mugs from law school. Like, in that cabinet there were four mugs from USD Law. She took those. That is so flipping weird. Did she take, like, what? Why would you take those? I'm, I'm baffled. It's so weird. And this is why I didn't, like, that's fine, I wasn't using those mugs because they made me think of her, but I just opened up to make a cup of coffee and I was like, 
Why is there more space in the cabinet? Because she took the four USD law school mugs. God, that's weird. Okay, <laughs> I'll see you later. I'm sorry I have to talk to you from the cup holder. I'm driving to work and I don't know what is going on. I just got hit with this wave of anxiety. I don't know what it is. I resolved to, I'm gonna email the mediator people and try and set up a meeting so that I can meet with them in the same way that she did, so that I can go there and meet them and see if they're people I wanna work with. So I'm gonna do that this morning. I think that's reasonable. Even though I said I can't deal with mediation while I'm in school, I'm trying to finish the school year. I will do that, I will email them, and I, I think that's that's good of me, right? I, I don't know why I need to do it, but Monday freaked me out. She, she has freaked me out, she's scared me. And then, as I was walking to the elevator, I got a, a call from a number in Chula Vista that I don't, you know, that's not in my phone. I got hit with this wave of panic, like, oh, what if that's a process server? What if, what if she just went ahead and filed? and that's somebody trying to serve me. It's funny the little things that trigger you, or trigger me. Getting a call from a number I didn't know has kind of sent me into this panic of, what's that number, who is it? You know, and it could, it, it, it could just be a solicitor, but given the timing, or given the fact that she wants to be divorced before the end of the year, she might do something rash. And I'm a little, I'm a little bit thrown by, you know, when I looked at her call record, and saw that she was in touch with a, um, a mortgage broker up in Northern California. It, it definitely, it, it points an arrow in the direction of her moving. I feel entitled to the story because I'm still married to her, but she fucking hates me. She hates me for nothing I've done. She, on the other hand, cheated on me and stole this guy away from his girlfriend. <laughs> so how could I possibly be the bad guy here? <laughs> It's, it's madness, it, it really is. And I think it, it shows the power of persuasion or gaslighting or that principle that if you, if, you hear, if you hear a wrong thing enough times, it starts to become more right in your mind. Um, though I have it bookmarked at home, I can't remember what it's called, but basically that. Me getting in touch with his ex-girlfriend, there's nothing wrong with that. There just isn't. She, she cheated on me, she moved out, she did all that. So I'm free to do whatever I want, but she's told me so many times that I, I can't talk to his ex-girlfriend that I feel like I'm doing wrong. And I think the only reason I feel like I'm doing wrong is because early on, in the infancy of this breakup, I said that I wouldn't talk to his ex-girlfriend. I promised. A lot's changed in three months. I don't think I need to be beholden to those rules anymore. At that time, she was living with her friend. That was, <laughs> that was when I believed she was living with her friend, trying to figure out if she wanted to be with me or him. You know, she hadn't been too forthcoming about wanting to have a family with him. She knew that, she kept that from me. And I'm not gonna say that's a, that's a lie of omission, but she definitely omitted something that would have been very powerful in the understanding process. If she said, I'm not coming back because I want to have babies with him. I want to have a family with him. That would have changed the picture for me. That would have made it a little less about me and a whole lot more about her. But no, she didn't do that. She's done nothing to act in my, in my best interests. She will claim that she hasn't talked to me for three weeks because I asked her not to. But when she got it wrong, she, she got her dates wrong. She flew into the crazy, the crazy rage that was Monday, and and now I'm all anxious and I'm all not good for my last week of school when I need to be the most focused. So it's not as if on Monday morning when she found out I still had school, she was like, "Oh, I'm, you know, I'm sorry. Let's uh, let's reconvene in a week. Have a nice last week of school. Good luck with school. I hope your kids make good work. Any, any, any well wishing that any stranger would wish to another stranger, she couldn't even lay that on me." Instead, there was the barrage of harassing texts. Why can't we be kind? <sighs> I think the sooner I'm done with this thing, the better. Wednesday is done. This was a long one. It was super, super busy. It was full. It was just a lot of work. They wait until the bitter end, and then they expect that I'll stay and help them when they wasted a lot of time during the semester. And my nature is to stay and help because 
I like people to make cool stuff, but I think it's really important that I had plans this afternoon so that I can't stay. I can't, I can't reinforce that behavior of wasting time. Like, it just has to be what it is. The day was good. I feel like this is a snapshot into summer. It was good, I felt good. I was distracted and busy and I talked to people and I felt strong and overall real good. And now that school's over, I feel nervous. I feel like this is what summer will be like. This will be real life. I went from the high of school to the sort of terror of being alone. And maybe terror is a strong word, but it is, it is two different existences. The me at school, I'm finally reclaiming who I like to be at school and that will end. And then I'll figure out what, what summer me is like. I'm gonna try and stay productive and busy. Keep your fingers crossed that she's not at the house, please. So here we go, like a usual Wednesday. I'm driving down the ramp. I don't know if she'll be parked here or not. And my anxiety today, God, I hope she's not. White car, white car, white car, white car, no white car. I'm really, really glad she's not here. I was just writing a email to the mediator, basically saying, you know, should I meet with them? Yeah, I basically said, hi, my name is Ken. Uh, my wife is really anxious to get divorced and has chosen them as a mediator, but it concerns me that she's already met with them. People have told me that's a giant red flag. Should I meet with a different mediator? Should I come in and meet with her individually and, you know, have the same sort of initial consult that my wife did? And as I was writing that email, my wife texted me three times. First text said, does my silence mean I'm not going to mediation? Because I haven't responded in two days. It was two days ago that she broke into the condo to take her Jimmy Choo bag and her trophies and her mugs. I can't respond day of because that's like rewarding a dog for bad behavior. I didn't respond yesterday because I've been really busy and today I've been really busy. So she has to sit and wait and stew in what she's doing. The first text said, does my silence mean I'm not gonna do mediation? And then the next text said, could I respond with a yes or no at some point today to let her know? And then the third text said, I'm moving out of San Diego. Basically, next week needs to happen. It's important. She has a meeting set up with a lawyer in case I say no. She's got a clock ticking. This is weird. It's kind of thrilling and scary that she'll go away. I'll be on my own. I mean, I'm on my own, but the ghost of her is around and, and she's moving. I mean, I knew it, right? Like I saw the thing, I saw the thing last night that said she was contacting a mortgage broker up in, Northern California. So why am I surprised? And that's why I'm glad I did it because I'm not totally blindsided. It's just, it's the difference between knowing something's gonna happen and the reality of hearing it. Just a weird feeling in my chest right now, but I'm gonna go ride a horse and hopefully feel better about that. Uh, and sort of plot what I'm gonna say back to her. So yeah, I'll talk to you soon. So it's gonna be my first full ride on my new saddle and I am Really, really excited. It is so hot here, and honestly, I'm so excited for the saddle that I forgot to take my helmet out of the car, so I have to run back and get my helmet. Yeah, my head's a little funny right now, knowing that she's moving away. You know, I shouldn't be surprised, but it's still, I still keep thinking about it. Like, oh, she's, she's gonna leave. I'm gonna live here, and she's gonna leave. You know, we lived here, and now it'll be me living here, and that's weird. Oh, it's gonna be really weird. I wonder if I'll feel lonely. You know, like, I live here and she lives here. It's always been our place, so even though we're broken up, we still live in the same place and occasionally see each other, which isn't good for me, but I do wonder if when she ships out, if, if I will feel loss, like an emptiness. Oh, it's gonna be weird. I wonder when it'll be. I wonder when we'll have that conversation. We haven't had many conversations, so God, who knows? Okay, I'm gonna go get my horse. Hey, this is me and Vinny. We had a good day today. Oh, look at those ears. He's not happy, huh? Anyway. Oh, ah, oh, he has an itchy face and, oh, I'm a scratching pup. <laughs> anyway, that's Vinny. I like Vinny very much. He's a good boy.
What an incredible lesson. It was just all different to have a saddle that fits me really, really well. I just, I felt, I felt more connected to the horse. I felt like I could hold on to the saddle better. Jumping went better. The horse was more responsive. I don't, maybe it was just a coming together of elements, but it was a really good day. It was really super fun. I'm proud of myself. <laughs> When the, when the horse left long, like I followed it, you know, just things, things we've been talking about for a long time finally started to click and finally started to make sense. And I'm, I just feel really excited. As it pertains to her, it's only been a couple hours since she texted me that she's moving away from San Diego. And it's weird, like it keeps washing over me in, in both positive and negative waves. Sometimes I'm like, sweet, I don't have to deal with her crap anymore. And sometimes I'm like, my wife is moving away. Like we're still married, she's moving away. The thing that's weird for me though is, I'm doing so well on the horses and she'll never know. It would actually be meaningful to me if she was proud of me. If she was like, holy shit, like, or <laughs> holy, holy cow, like you're doing really well. That would mean something to me. And I'm never gonna get that from her. And I don't need it needed, but it, it's one of those pet things where it's like, it would be cool if, if, if she saw my growth. Because she was there at my first lesson. <laughs> and that wasn't so good. I'm, you know, I'm trying to internalize it and be like, I'm proud of me. Like it's, I did this, I'm doing this. I'm really proud of myself. And I am. And my teacher is amazing. And, and she was so congratulatory and kept telling me like, you did a really good job today. Like a really, really good job. That was so, so good. And that feels really good right now. You know, when you feel low and somebody compliments something that you do well, it's a nice balance. It's something to sort of pick you up from maybe a, a lower point you might've been at. So that, that was great. I'm gonna drive home. Maybe I should text her from here. I don't know. And just tell her I've emailed the mediator. Uh, maybe I'll wait till I get home. I just want to enjoy, you know, yeah, you're right, you're right. I should just enjoy the ride, enjoy the afterglow of being here in this thing. And then when I get home, deal with the life stuff. Thank you, you're right. Okay, I hope you have a nice afternoon. Anyway, we'll talk later, I'll see you. I can see from call records that my wife is, I guess, letting people know that she's moving. I just need a date. I don't know when. She's framing it as if we need to mediate by the beginning of next week because she's moving, but I secretly think it's still because of tax reasons. I can't believe she would be moving next week. I mean, moving before we've dealt with the condo. I'm sure there's a story there. Because there's holes in the story and because I don't understand, now I'm compelled to want to meet with her and talk. Like, now that I know she's leaving, but it wouldn't do me any good. I know this. I don't need to talk to her. I have this funny feeling right now. It's, I'm a little bit excited she's leaving, and I'm a little bit sad because it'll feel like I'm being left behind. And being left behind in San Diego, like, that's not a thing. I live in the greatest city. Like, <laughs> I wouldn't want to live in San Francisco. Honestly, I don't like San Francisco that much. And it's not that it's a bad city, it's gorgeous, and I'm hoping to run the half marathon up there. But I've had a few experiences there that just make me apprehensive. You know, when I was there last fall and the homeless guy just spit in my face, like literally gobs of spit, it was disgusting. I don't know, it just changed me. It just felt like I'd been, not like I'd been attacked, but my, my personal space was definitely violated and I, I, it was a little bit traumatic. So yeah. I love where I live. I love San Diego. I'm so happy here. I, I have great friends. Like my students are great. My job is great. I, I really don't want for more. My, my life can be what I make of it. So yeah, I'm not jealous that she's leaving. It's just weird because we've been a unit for so long. Like really good years of being a, a, an amazing couple. And now it's done and she's pulling up her stakes and going away and it's weird. And maybe it's just another level of realness, but you know, when she's gone, I won't run into her in the store or see her on the highway or anywhere else she might be. I can, I can actually rebuild my life. And I think that will be tremendous. So yeah, I guess the sooner she goes, the better. <laughs> hey, so tonight went really strangely. I, um... <laughs> I was gonna get a lot done, and I have ended up just watching YouTube videos. There's a couple that I'm obsessed with. I'm gonna do a quick, a quick painting tonight, or a quick pour painting, it's not really a painting. 
I don't know, because I want to, because I like making these. I think what I'm going to do is two same cups and see how they pour. You'll see soon what it all looks like. I hope you're having a great night. I'll see you later. Well, I'll probably see you tomorrow. Have a super night.